Hey guys, Alex here at On Point Leather. Today I want to talk to you about the Montana Horseman Saddle Building School. I had the pleasure of taking the school back in early summer of 2021. I was there from May until the very end of June. It's a five week course and I wanted to give you a rundown of my experiences and what I thought about it. So the cost of the school is $6,000 and there's two courses. There is a beginning course and an advanced course. They want you to take the beginning course first, unless you already have experience building saddles and you can go in and take the advanced course. When I was there, there was one individual who was taking the advanced course and the rest of us were taking the beginning course. There was, uh, there was four of us all together, four students. What a lot of people do is they take two back to back. They take the first course and then they take the advanced course at right after. And that's what uh, the advanced student was doing. He'd already been there four or five weeks prior. The school, like I say, it's six, it's six thousand dollars. That does include room. It does not include board. There's no food available, but the room is included and a very nice, I guess, perk or ability of the school is that they take the GI Bill. So if you're a veteran like myself and you have the GI Bill available, then you can use, you can apply the GI Bill to the school and it covers it entirely. In fact, if you are a recipient on the GI Bill, then you know this, I actually received a stipend to attend the school. So the biggest uh, cost out of pocket was the vacation time that I had to use at work, burning five straight weeks. That can be a hard thing to do. Uh, if you're currently between jobs, uh, out of work for one reason or another, then this is an excellent opportunity and I highly recommend it. So like I was saying, the school is five weeks long and the class schedule runs from Monday through Saturday. So it's a six day a week class. Sundays are off, they're your days and Saturday is an early release. We got out around noon to one o'clock, I believe. Normal days, Monday through Friday, we started about 7 a.m., if I'm remembering correctly, and we got out sometime middle of the afternoon. It varied on the day, but it was about 3 to 4.30, uh, just depending on the day and how fast things moved for what they had planned that day. The first couple days is just sitting around the table doing classwork. It is not PowerPoint. There's no PowerPoint at all, but you are listening to the instructor, Dale, talk and instruct and teach. Gives you the history of saddles, types of saddle making. He goes into detail about what different saddles you can make, the certain makers who made those saddles famous, the historical aspect of saddle making, a lot of saddle history, how to fit a saddle to a horse. Really, any information that you want to know about a saddle, I believe, was covered. So when it comes to the room that was provided, again, like I say, I think this was a, an excellent feature of this school because when I researched other saddle schools in close proximity to where I live, I live in Oregon, there was one in Pendleton, although I haven't been able to find them on a website, so I don't know if they shut down. Uh, I haven't looked recently either. They do not include lodging. They give you advice on cheap lodging. They talk about trailer parks where you could tow a fifth wheel, but their lodging is not included. So at the Montana Horseman Saddle Building School, lodging is included. The lodging is not amazing. However, for being free, I think it's pretty great. Uh, my biggest complaint about the school entirely was the bed. I have a comfortable bed at my house. I have a queen size bed. This was a twin size bed. It wasn't very comfortable and my feet kind of hung over the edge of it. Other than that, it was, it was great. There's a full fridge. It's not a mini fridge. It's a full fridge and freezer inside of your room. There is a set of dishes. There are cooking utensils, mixing bowls, spatulas, all sorts of things like that. There's a hot plate available. There is a crock pot. My room had a, a recliner in there. There's a dresser and one of those standing closets. So a wire or not a wire, but a bar that you can run some hangers on and hang up your clothing. The bathroom is a common bathroom. There's one male bathroom and one female bathroom. My class did have a girl in it, so I don't know if it's a class of all males. The female bathroom is available or not. I would assume so, but I, I don't know. My class had male and female attendees, so there was one bathroom. You'll just kind of have to plan amongst your 
classmates who's going to shower when. The rooms are not soundproof by any means, and they are also attached within the saddle shop. So you wake up and you walk out right directly into the classroom. So if someone is working, uh, burning the midnight oil, working on their saddle, or just doing some leather work, then you're gonna hear that. So hopefully you are in a class with respectable people when it comes to being late at night, that sort of thing. So the school is located outside of Belgrade, Montana. It is right in the heart of the Gallatin Valley, an extremely beautiful location. Everywhere you turn and look, there's snow-capped mountains. Again, I was there early summer. It's, it's gorgeous out there. Belgrade is about 10 minutes away to get into the city of Belgrade. And there, Belgrade has pretty much what you need. It has a Albertsons, large truck stops, a few different stores and restaurants and things like that, nothing too fancy. And then Bozeman, Montana is about 25, 30 minutes away from the school. And that is a much larger town. Uh, very big for Montana, much larger town than Belgrade. And that has about everything that you should need while you're there at the school. And Bozeman's a nice town. It's growing very big. The locals of Bozeman, I don't think, appreciate that too much. The prices around there have gone up quite a bit, but the town is nice. Uh, a lot of restaurants, a lot of shopping opportunities. Uh, you can enjoy yourself if you like going to town on your days off or after class, because again, you get out early afternoon. When it comes to the tools that are provided, they have everything that you need to build a saddle with. Uh, this is the saddle that I built at the school and every tool that I would have needed to use would be provided. You have the option of bringing your own tools and if you have your own tools and you're like me and you like your own tools and you've gotten used to those and you've invested in higher quality tools then I would suggest bringing those. I was very happy that I brought my own tools. They're tools that I've gotten to know and use and I like them. I've paid extra to have nicer tools and I enjoyed using them on the saddle. I like knowing that the tools that I, I have at home helped build this. As far as industrial machines go, they have several sewing machines. There's an Adler. I don't, I don't know Adler that well, so I don't know the model number, but there's an Adler. Very similar to the Cobra Class 4. I think there was a flatbed machine also maybe an 18 or a 20. There are several other older sewing machines that I don't remember the name of. They had a Cobra leather splitter. They had a, look like a homemade clicker press. They also had several Cobra burnishers, several Landis five and ones. And then, like I say, all of the hand tools necessary. There is a tooling station in the back of the classroom. Several seats up to a slab of granite. A lot of tooling tools uh, available for use. Again, if you have your own tools that you like using, I would suggest bringing those. Most of these were craftsman tools, which work fine. You can get better. And so if you're used to better, you, you'll miss those if you don't have them. You can keep your tools inside of your bedroom, so that's definitely an option. Also, while you are off, you have the ability to work on whatever projects you want to work on. So if you have, if you want to work on your saddle outside of class time, which is definitely an option, then you're more than welcome to do that. And if you're going to be tooling your saddle, this is a rough out saddle, there's no tooling on this at all. If you're going to be tooling your saddle to any degree, especially a, a full floral or anything like that, I would probably say that you're going to need to work on it outside of class time. I work somewhat slow. I think I work efficiently and I do good work, but I'm, I'm a little slower than other people. I finished my saddle about two days or a day before the end of class. I went there with the expectation of building two saddles. It's something that in their website they say that you can do. You can spend an extra thousand dollars for all of the materials to build two saddles and that's not covered under the GI Bill. That's just cash out of your pocket. So I went there with the expectation of building two saddles and I went home with all of the materials to build another saddle. They hadn't even touched them. Uh, this, this saddle took the entirety of my time there. And when I say the entirety of my time there, I don't mean all five weeks. Uh, the first few days, close to a first week, is classroom time, and then you build a saddle with the class. 
So to get in what the class looks like, the first few days are instruction, history of saddles, how to fit saddles to horses, that type of thing. And then the class builds a saddle or two. We worked on two saddles simultaneously. So we would do a step on this saddle and we would walk over and do a, or not this saddle, we would do a step on the saddle that we're working on and then we would walk over and do a step on the same step on the other saddle that we're working on. And so we got quite a bit of hands-on experience. And then once you finish the saddles that the class is building as a, as a class, then you start working on your personal saddle. And the saddle is one that you just get to take home and display in your living room if you're someone like me who has no business building saddles because you don't have horses or anything like that. So that's something to mention is that this review comes from somebody who has zero horseman experience, uh, zero saddle building experience. I went there with no knowledge at all of saddles, how to build saddles, anything like that. Uh, I've, I did very little work with them before attending this class. I had done a lot of leather work, but none of that was necessary. They walk you through everything. So you can go there with zero experience with horses, zero experience building saddles, zero experience leather working. You're treated just the same. You can walk out of there having built a saddle. I'm very happy with the saddle that I built. Not knowing much about saddles, it's hard to compare it to other ones. I know about leather work and I'm happy with the way everything came together. Knowing how patterns and construction of other objects work, this seems like it went together very well uh, with the assistance of the instructors. And I, I couldn't be happier with the class that I took there. It was an excellent experience that I would love to go back and do again. I would love to go back and do the second round. I don't know that I will necessarily because I don't know how serious I'm going to get into building saddles. When I think about taking a long vacation like that, five weeks away from work, that's not an easy thing to get. I was surprised I was able to get it in the first place. I sometimes wonder if that time wouldn't be more wisely invested into a different course just to learn a new skill or a skill that more, is more applicable to my lifestyle. Um, if you're following the channel, then you know that I'm trying to get into shoemaking. So there's a lot of shoemaking courses out there. However, it's very tempting to go back for the second round of this course because I know I would enjoy it. There's no risk, in my opinion, on whether or not I'm going to have a good time at the school or whether or not I would think that that was worth my time and effort to go. There were several different models of saddles, several different types of saddles that you were able to build just available to the students to pick. There was a Wade, a Bowman saddle, and a Flat Creek Packer saddle. This is the Flat Creek Packer. It's totally up to you as to which one you want to build. And then if you want to build a different kind, I think it's possible for you to reach out to the Moors who run the school and let them know that you have a specific model that you want to build. And I think they can order you in that tree and it'll be there for you when, the, when it arrives. Cause there was a couple trees with students names on them who were in future classes, already enrolled in future classes and they were slightly different. So I think that's an option. Uh, that's something that you would have to talk with them about if that's something that you want to do. There is some choices as to what you get to make. It's not set in stone one way or the other and you get to build it exactly how you want to build it. Uh, I built this one full rough out. I was planning on entering it in the rough out saddle competition that the Pendleton Leather Show puts on. However, when they put out the new rules for the 2021 Leather Show, it said that there were no saddles being accepted that were built in a classroom setting. So the saddle became a disqualifying saddle. Uh, and I wasn't able to get the other saddle that I was hoping to build done in time for that show. So maybe next year I'll get a saddle entered in that competition. The instructors, uh, Dale Moore is the lead instructor. He's been running the school for, I don't know how many years, probably decades I think is how long the school has been running for. Tons of experience, decades and decades of experience, not only with building saddles, but with horses. Coming from someone who doesn't know anything about horses or saddles or anything, he seemed very knowledgeable in what he does. Very interesting person to talk to and listen to, told a lot of stories that were very entertaining. Uh, he was also a former school administrator, principal, I think a teacher, so he has a lot of education experience, which 
flows into the saddle building school that he's running. So it's not just someone who likes building saddles that's trying to teach a class. It's someone who knows about teaching classes who also likes building saddles and has combined the two skills. And that shows when you're at the school as a student. Cody McDowell is another instructor who was there and that is Dale's grandson. Cody doesn't have the experience that Dale has because he's not as old as Dale and hasn't been doing it as long. However, I didn't feel like he was lacking in any way as an instructor. I really enjoyed working with both of them. Great people to talk to, very friendly. Felt very welcome while I was there. I feel like I walked away with a couple new friends. So I mentioned that the Montana Horseman Saddle Building School comes with two different courses, advanced course and a beginner course. When you look at the website, the courses are detailed very differently. They talk about things you can do in one course versus things you can do in another course. It looks like if you want to build a certain type of saddle, you're going to need to go back for that second course. From what I witnessed, and I didn't dig into this, but from what I saw, that's not exactly true. I think that they're willing to show you everything that you need to know in the first course. And if you want to make a roping saddle or a barrel riding saddle or a trail riding saddle or anything like that, I think that they're more than happy, more than happy to walk you through that even though it is your first time there. The student who was in the advanced course seemed to do everything that we were doing. He just had more experience because he had just been through the beginning course. He did it back to back. He sat in the classroom with us while we were getting our history lessons. He basically just got a, a refresh on those. I don't think he was necessarily required to. I think that if he wanted to go over and work on a saddle because he had already been through those courses, he would have been fine too. But I think that he chose to just get that information twice, which I probably would have done the exact same thing. It was a lot of information to get. And then he worked on his saddle while we worked on the classroom saddles. That's the big difference with the advanced courses. Since you already know how to do most of these skills that we're learning in the beginning course, you don't necessarily have to relearn those with the class saddles. You can go and apply them to your saddle and the instructors are there. Should you get a hiccup, they can come over and walk you through a process and you can get back to work. So that was the big difference I saw. I'm not saying that the advanced class isn't worth it. I think that it is. However, I don't think that you need to go to the advanced class to get the advanced level training that is described on the website. Again, that's my observation. I would check. I think that the advanced class is really just a second round of making a saddle under supervision, which can be very handy because there is a lot that goes into this process and making one under supervision and then walking away and trying to do it yourself. There are things that you're gonna forget. There's things that you're gonna be just slow to recall. W making it twice is just, it's just gonna be better. I don't think that that really takes a lot of explanation. That's enough. Hey, no. Come here. So I think that that ends my review. The Montana Horseman Saddle Building class was an excellent, excellent, time that I had. I, I really enjoyed it. I couldn't have been happier with the school that I, I chose. There's a lot of different saddle building schools out there. I can't speak for those. I'm not going to speak poorly about them. I have no idea how they are. This one was very good, in my opinion. As someone who didn't know anything about horses or saddle building, I was a little nervous that it would be annoying for them to be teaching the very basics of everything. It wasn't, at least they didn't show that at all. Uh, I think that uh, they were very welcoming of someone with little to no experience in saddles and horses. They were friendly all the way around, very knowledgeable, happy to pass that knowledge along. And I think it was a great value, especially if you're coming from the military and you get to apply the GI Bill into this. And then with lodging being included, that was another huge cost saving advantage that this school had that I don't think others have. And I think that's really what sets it apart. Not to mention the fact that you're in such a beautiful area. So everything about it was just really enjoyable. The, the time in the school was great. And then your off time was also very easy to find something to do if you don't want to sit in the leather shop anymore and continue working. I hope that you found this interesting. If you have any questions at all, please drop those down in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer anything that you guys want to know. And until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.